praise God, welcome to the Nanchala online service. Thank you for joining us as we hear and worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, worship your name, Lord, we give you glory and honor, Lord. Sante Yesu Angu. afternoon as I pray King of glory that as we as I minister your word may you give me utterance for the glory and honor of your name I thank you for this service I thank you for the viewers may you empower them and touch them wherever they are as I minister your word may it come forth in power and authority 
to transform the lives of your people. I thank you and I give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I bless the Lord for this wonderful moment. For I know it's such a special time for this lunch hour meeting. I thank God for wherever you are, wherever you are tuned in, wherever you are watching. I bless the name of the Lord because you are it's a, such a moment that God is going to minister to us in a special way because I know he has gathered you wherever you are with a purpose, with a purpose to minister to your life. So I know you already release yourself in the presence of the Almighty wherever you are for his word this afternoon, that it will not touch your heart and transform you. For one thing I know, the word of God comes to us to weigh us to weigh us to the, to, the, to the level that God wants us to be. So when he releases his word, it comes to our life to weigh us and see where we are, what we are supposed to do, and what we need to do. So I thank God for this precious moment that I'm humbled to bring the word of God, and I know it's going to be a blessing unto you. So today we are going uh, to read the word of God from the book of Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 16 to 19. I will read from uh, uh, NIV version, and God will bless us all. The Bible says, from verse 16, uh, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. And this is the word of God. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. As we have read from the scripture that I've just said from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, verse 9, uh, there, are four, there are few things we are going to learn this afternoon that shall enlighten us of what God expects us to do as Christians as his children in the kingdom. And one thing I want us to learn, this is a very powerful scripture that we want to learn today. And the following things are, are, are being outlined from this scripture of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 verse to, to verse 19. And one thing we hear here, the Bible says there are six things the Lord has. You can imagine there are things that God, our God loves, and there are things that God hates. And this scripture tonight is outlining the things that God hates in our lives as his children. And it's warning to us, a, 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 a warning for us, each and every one of us as a child of God, that these six things are not supposed to be found in our lives as a child of God. Because when the Bible says they are a hatred to God, it means because the Bible and the word that is in it is the word that comes from the mouth of God and we don't take it for granted. And therefore, these are the things that we need to understand as the way the, the writer of this scripture outlines them. From this Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says there are six things that God hates in our lives. He doesn't expect them anymore when he looks or when he weighs us. And that's why he sends his word to enable us to realize, to come to a realization of what he expects us to do, of what he expects us to be. And that's why this scripture tonight, there are six things I want us to understand that they do not please the eyes of God when he looks at you as his child. And one of these things is outlined. One is haughty eyes. Praise the name of the living God. I will just read all of them, then I will elaborate each and every one of them to the last point. So the second is a lying tongue. The third is the hands that shed innocent blood. The fourth is a heart that devises wicked schemes. Number five, is the feet that are quick to rush into evil. Number six, a false witness who pours out lies. These are the six things 
that God has in our Christian life. These are the six things when God sees them into your life, you become an enemy of God. And this brings us to the title of our reading, The Enemies of Progress. I'm going to minister this afternoon concerning the enemies of progress in the name of Jesus. That when these things become in our lives as a Christian, they, they make us to become an enemy of God. Because God is raising a generation that should serve him in holiness, in humility, in humbleness. But when he looks at us and, and, and sees these six things being manifested in our lives, they make us to become an enemy of God. And when we become an enemy of God, it reaches a time we are not able to fulfill the mission of God in our lives. Because God does not work with people who are enemies. When we become enemies to God, he becomes an enemy to us, regardless of the love he has for us. And that's why he's enlightening us this afternoon that these six things should not be found in our lives as children of God. One, haughty eyes. The other name for the haughty eyes is pride. Praise the name of the living God. When you are proud, when you become proud of yourself, in one way or another, it makes, it becomes an obstacle to your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Pride in a Christian life becomes an obstacle to a Christian life because God does not love pride at all. God does not work with people who are proud. Praise the name of the living God. And that's why he says he hates a pride person. Because when pride comes your way, it tries to undermine the giftings of God in your life. They take away the position of God and, uh, 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 and you let God to be number two. When pride comes number one, then it means God is number two in your life. And that's why that thing that takes the position of God becomes a hatred to God. God does not love anything that takes his glory. He shares his glory alone and not with anything else. And that's why we as Christians, the children of the almighty living God, God as he looks unto our lives, he doesn't to expect to see any pride in us. Because as the saying goes, pride is after a fall. When you become pride, you are just after a fall. Because God does not love people who are pride. Praise the name of the living God. Because when this thing called pride comes in your life, it takes the position of God. Because how, do you, how does it take the position of God? Many times, Proud people need to be exalted all the time. When you fail to exalt them, they think that there is something you have not done to their lives. And that's why many people fall away from the track because they need to be given praises. They need to be exalted. They need to be lifted because of what they have. Yes, that gift you have and that gift you are operating in comes from the Lord. And it's only the Lord that needs to be glorified in that gift and not you as an individual. Praise the name of the living God. So we should not allow to be full of pride because when it takes the position of God, we become an enemy of God. And that's why when pride comes to a Christian life, it becomes an enemy of progress because there is no single person with pride in the kingdom of God that can achieve that mission God has assigned in his or her life. Because God hates pride. And God doesn't expect his children to be proud. Because one thing, the only thing we can be proud of, that you can walk shoulders high, is only when you boast with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't need to be proud at all. Because this pride comes and takes the position of God. And this destroys our relationship with God. And that's why many people fall along the way and they are left to be an empty vessel because they just decided to invite pride in their lives. 
And when you invite pride in your life, God takes away. God lifts you. And when God lifts you, you become an empty vessel. Praise the name of the living God. So this is a very dangerous obstacle. Being pride before the eyes of the Lord is a dangerous enemy. It is a dangerous enemy of progress. You can never progress. You can never do anything successful when you are working under pride in your life. So watch out wherever you are a child of God. God doesn't expect us to be so proud. And this can be proved, can be clarified from Proverbs 21 chapter 4, where the Bible says that haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, are a sin. All these things before God becomes a sin. A proud heart, which is a lamp to the wicked, becomes a sin before the eyes of the Almighty. So God doesn't expect us to be proud because pride takes his position in our lives. And this can also be clarified in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 13, where the Bible says, those whose eyes are ever so haughty, whose glances are so disdainful, God hates such a people in the name of Jesus. And we can also prove the same from Psalms 18, verse 27, where the Bible says, You serve the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. God only serves the humble people. People who learn to humble themselves are the people that God works with, are the people that God exalts. Those who does not walk by pride are the people that God exalts. And that's why the Bible says God serves the humble but brings down those who are not humble. Praise the name of the living God. So we want us to be exalted as the children of God. Let's learn to be humble and not proud. Praise the name of the living God. Because when we learn that God hates pride, let us shun ourselves from pride and allow God to take over, to lead us and to direct us to fulfill his mission as humble vessels in the mighty name of Jesus. So people of God, God hates a haughty eyes because they take his position in the name of Jesus. And now we go to the next point number two, a lying tongue. Praise the name of the living God. A lying tongue, God does not like anything with a lying tongue. When you have a lying tongue as a child of God, it becomes an enemy of progress in your life. Because one thing, God will not be able to work with you because whatever comes out of your tongue does not glorify him at all. Praise the name of the living God. God does not like people with a lying tongue. Because when you speak lies, you glorify the devil and not the God we serve. Because the God we serve is a truthful God. He expects whatever we speak to be things that brings glory to him. Hallelujah. That whatever we do as human beings must glorify his name. But when we become full of lies, then we do not glorify the kingdom of God at all. And that's why God expects us this afternoon, whatever comes from our lips should be things that glorify his name, should be things that brings glory to the people around. Because people judge us by what, by what we speak. Hallelujah. When the people of, people of God look upon you, they will judge you, they will have a testimony by what you speak. Hallelujah. Because the words that comes inside from us determines who we are before the eyes of God. So one thing that God hates in our life is a lying tongue. Because it becomes an enemy of progress. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, you will never progress in life when you use lies. Hallelujah. Because when God says he hates lies, he means from the bottom of his heart. And therefore we must be careful as children of God that when he looks at us, he should not find us 
with lying tongues because they become an enemy of progress in our lives. We cannot progress at all when our lips are full of lies. That thing God hates at all. So we need to be careful with the way we speak, with what we do. Does it bring glory to God? Hallelujah. So God hates a lying tongue. And this can be proved from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse. Hallelujah. That wisdom will save us from the ways of wicked men. And this wisdom comes from God. It is the one who gives us the wisdom that we use to determine the words spoken to us. Are they from wise people or are they from evil people? And that's why the Bible says, wisdom will save you a child of God from the ways of the wicked men, from whose words are perverse, the people who speak evil against the things of God. They are people who speak against the things of God, who are not happy with what God is doing. And therefore, they always speak against. And that is a lying tongue, which God hates. And this can also be proved from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 19. The Bible says, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only for a moment. Hallelujah. That truthful lips will endure forever, but a lying tongue will only last for a moment. This means that when you are a person full of lies, you will never go anywhere. You will never achieve anything because God has a lying tongue. And whatever you do with lies will never achieve anything, will never progress at all because a lying lip is an enemy of progress in the life of a Christian. So we must be careful with what comes out of our lips. We want to endure forever. Let us be people who are full of truth. Let us take truth wherever we are. In whatever we do, we must learn to speak truth because God expects our lips to be full of truth. Praise the name of the living God. And that's why he says a truthful lip will endure forever. Hallelujah. You want to endure and to enjoy the missions of God, let us be truthful for, from one, God himself, two, ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. At times we fail because we think what we are doing, we are doing it for man. And when you start doing things for man, that is the beginning of your fall. Praise the name of the living God. So we need to know that a truthful lips will endure forever in the life of a Christian. And we can also clarify from Proverbs 17, verse 7, the Bible says, arrogant lips are unsuited to a fool. How much was lying lips to a ruler? Praise the name of the living God. God has an or arrogant lips, which are suited to a fool. He says, and arrogant lips are suited to a fool. A person who doesn't understand himself is what is called a fool. A person who does not understand who he is before the eyes of God. That one the Bible refers to be a fool because whatever he does does not glorify God. And that's why the Bible says how much worse will be a lying lip to a ruler. Praise the name of the living God. We as children of God, we are rulers wherever we are. Hallelujah. We are rulers wherever we are. And you can imagine a ruler with a lying tongue before the eyes of God. It means the people you are ruling will never achieve anything because there is nothing good they can learn from you. There is nothing good that they can, can attract any other person. Because what comes out of your lips is things that are filthy. Praise the name of the living God. So we need to understand that God has an arrogant lips in the name of Jesus. And as we finish on a lying tongue, 
We can also clarify from Proverbs 21, verse 6. The Bible says, A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. How wonderful is that word? That a fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor. And what is vapor? Vapor is something that is evaporating very fast. And that's what the Bible says. Any fortunes made out of lies will not last longer. They will just evaporate like vapor in the name of Jesus. Because there are things we achieve in the wrong way. There are things we achieve that does not glorify God. God is not involved at all. And such a fortunes, the Bible says, they will evaporate like vapor. Hallelujah. They will never last. The things that will last in our lives are the things that we achieve in the right manner. The things we have, we work hard to achieve. The things we run to achieve in the will of God. They are the things that will last in the life of a Christian. Praise the name of the living God. So as a child of God, God does not expect us to be working and achieving things in the wrong way. Because I know we are living in a corrupt world. A world that does not fear God. Hallelujah. And that's why we are here to enlighten you. That you want anything, any fortune in our life to endure and to be progressive. Then we need to shun from every evil tongue. Praise the name of the living God. Because whatever we achieve will be glory to God. And it's only the things that we achieve in the right manner that will bring glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we need to understand that any fortune, a child of God, you have attained or obtained in the wrong way will also disappear in the same way. Hallelujah. Whatever you get in the wrong manner will also go in the same way. But whatever you get in the right way will also be maintained in the right way. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And the third thing that we are going to look upon that is an enemy of progress in our lives. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Praise the name of the living God. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. God has not given us these hands to misuse them the way we think. God did not bless you with the hands to use them in your own way. He gave us these hands so that we can use them to worship him. When we are told, lift up your hands and worship the Lord, that is the most important thing that God gave you hands for. Praise the name of the living God. So that's why he says, he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And that can be clarified from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 11. The Bible says, if they say, come along with us, let's lie in wait for someone's blood. Let's waylay some harmless souls. God hates such a person. You become detestable before God. Because God does not allow us to harm one another, to destroy one another. And that's why he says, when they call you to a mission that does not glorify God, you need to run away. Praise the name of the living God. You don't need to associate yourself with people who are not in the will of God. You don't need to associate yourself with the people who are doing contrary to your faith. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why the Bible says us, when they call you with their lying lips, you need to run away. You need to go away because you don't need to stain your hands with the innocent blood that will be claiming you the whole of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And we can also clarify this from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, for their feet rush into sin, they are swift to shed blood. They are people who are always proud. With the legs that God has blessed them, 
It is always leading them to do evil. It is always directing them to do evil things. Whatever they think is just destruction along the way. Praise the name of the living God. And such a people, the Bible says that God hates them totally. Hallelujah. When you have feet that God has blessed you with, you use them to do evil, then that does not bring glory to God. A child of God, you need to be asking yourself, am I using my feet in the right manner? Am I using my feet to glorify God? Because when you are not using it for the right way, God has a way to minister to you. Praise the name of the living God. And we can also clarify this from Proverbs 28, 28 verse 17. The Bible says, a man tormented by the guilt of murder will be a fugitive till death. Let no one support him. Hallelujah. A person who used his legs and his hands to go and shed innocent blood. The Bible says, you shall be a fugitive until death. Praise the name of the living God. That nobody should help you. Meaning that nobody can save you from the sins of murder. From the sins of innocent blood. It is only Christ Jesus whom you can go back and cry for mercy. And he will have mercy on you. Praise the name of the living God. And no man, the Bible says, no man will support you. Meaning that no man can heal you from your sins. It is only Christ that can heal us from our sins, that can wash away our sins, that can take away the innocent in us. Praise the name of the living God. So God has a hands that shed innocent blood in the name of Jesus. Because we don't want to, be rem to remain fugitives the whole of our lives. Praise the name of the living God. And now we go to the fourth point. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible tells us clearly that God has a heart that devises wicked schemes. Because when you have a heart that devises wicked schemes, you become an enemy of progress. It becomes an enemy of progress because when your heart is wicked, nothing good can come out of you because you are just full of jealousy, full of destruction. When you look at others, you don't see anything good at other people. You only think you are the only important person on earth. Hallelujah. And that shows that your heart is wicked. When your heart is wicked, you shall never progress in life because the Bible says God hates a wicked heart. And because God hates a wicked heart, it becomes an enemy of progress in our lives as a children of God. So we need to weigh our hearts. When the word of God comes our way, allow it to weigh our hearts so that we can undermine where we have gone astray as the children of God. Because God searches our hearts every day, every moment. He's looking at your heart. What kind of heart are you carrying this afternoon? Praise the name of the Lord. What kind of heart do you have as a child of God? What kind of heart do you possess as a child of God? Because we need to learn this afternoon that God has a heart that devises wicked schemes. And this can be proved from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 31. The Bible says, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. Hallelujah. That they will eat the fruit of their ways. Hallelujah. Whatever you are today is determined with whatever is inside your heart. Hallelujah. Whatever you have achieved today is determined with what is in your heart. And that's why I'm asking you this afternoon, what kind of heart do you have as a child of God? Because when it is wicked, then you are detestable in the eyes of God. You become a big hatred in the eyes of God. Praise the name of the living God. God does not allow us because he says, 
we shall eat the fruit of our ways. So if you do bad, you will always reap bad. When you do good, you will always achieve good. Praise the name of the Lord. So the achievements you have at the moment are determined with the carried heart that you possess. Hallelujah. Because many times we have failed to understand that we see people progressing and you think it's just come out of nowhere. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to learn this afternoon that our hearts determine the kind of progress we have as children of God. Because when your heart is full of evil, God is not upon your way. And God is not in your life at all. And therefore, God hates a wicked heart. So you need to examine your heart and wait with the word of God and allow God to work in your heart to bring you to the way that he wants you to be in the name of Jesus. And we can also clarify from Proverbs 24 verse 2. The Bible says, For their hearts plot violence and their lips talk about making trouble. You can imagine somebody who is hurt is always plotting evil against others. That you, wherever you are, you are only but a troublemaker. In whatever you do, you are only but a troublemaker. In your place of work, you cannot give others rest. You are always troublesome. Hallelujah. And such a kind of people, wherever you are and you are listening this afternoon, that troublemaking becomes a hindrance to your progress. It becomes an enemy to your progress. Hallelujah. Because God hates it and he doesn't allow it to fit in his church. Praise the name of the living God. And we can also clarify this from Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The Bible says, when the Lord God saw the extent of human wickedness and that the trend and the direction of men's lives were only towards evil, then he decided to destroy the whole generation. So you can imagine with your wicked heart, God can decide to destroy you. Because in this book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, that's when God commanded Noah to begin building the ark. Because he wanted to destroy the whole generation that was full of wickedness. So when you are wicked, you become a God's target because he will destroy you. Hallelujah. Because when he says he hates it, he means he hates it. And therefore, when his anger arises, he will destroy you in Jesus' name. So you need to be careful that as a child of God, let us not allow ourselves to be carried away with a wicked heart. Because it becomes an enemy of progress in your life as an individual. Praise the name of the living God. And here we come to point number five. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. Hallelujah. The Bible outlines clearly that God hates the feet that are quick to rush into evil. There are people who are always pride, walking around to bring evil, walking around to do nothing, walking around to bring destruction. Hallelujah. When you are such a kind of person, God hates you from the bottom of his heart because he does not like people of destruction who use their feet to only to do evil. It is always good that we use our feet to run into his house and start doing the businesses of God. And the business of God is preaching his word, allowing others to know Jesus Christ. That is the best work you can do with your feet as a child of God. But let it be known unto you. If God looks at you as his child and found us that the feet he has blessed you with, you are using them to do, it, to do things that does not glorify him, then you become an enemy to God. You become an enemy to God. And this brings you being an enemy of progress because you never progress at all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And now we come to point number six, praise the name of the living God. 
false witnesses. Hallelujah. False witnesses. Ex this can be proved from Exodus 20.16. The Bible says, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Hallelujah. We are living in a world that people like to betray others. We are living in a dispensation where people does not value one another. We are living in a dispensation where people wants to enrich themselves. And because they want to enrich themselves, they use others as a sacrificial lamb in order for them to have their gains. Hallelujah. So God hates a false witness. And that's why he proves it in Exodus 20, 16, that you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. When you become a child of God, that always speaks false against your neighbor. You always give false testimony against your brothers and sisters. Then that alone becomes an enemy of progress in your life. And that's why you have stayed in that position for so long. Because when you become a false witness, you become an enemy of God. Yet God has not created us to become his enemies. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to be friends of God, but not enemies of God. We only become enemies of God when we choose to be false witnesses. Praise the name of the Lord. God has chosen us as his children to become witnesses of life and not witnesses of false testimonies. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, we need to learn this afternoon from where you are hearing this message that God hates a false testimony. When you find yourself testifying falsely against your neighbor, you become an enemy of God. And this alone becomes an enemy of progress in your life. And that's why you have worked tirelessly for so many years and you have achieved nothing. Because when God looks at you, what he can only see is a false witness. Praise the name of the Lord. God expects us to be witnesses of truth and not false. And that's why he has called you as his child. And therefore there must be a different, a, a different between a child of God and a child of darkness. Hallelujah. When we are children of light, we become witnesses of the gospel of Christ. And when we become false witnesses, we become witnesses of, of, of the kingdom of darkness. So which side are you? Are you for the kingdom of God? Which precise on truth testimony or you are in the kingdom of darkness that testifies false witnesses. So whose witness are you? That is the question you should be asking yourself this afternoon. Hallelujah. And this can also be clarified in Deuteronomy 19, verse 16 to 19. The Bible says, if a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse a man of a crime, the two men involved in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priests and the judges who are in office at that time. Hallelujah. That when you accuse one another and you bring your, 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 your dispute before the church, the Bible says you will stand in the stand before the judges and the priests that will make a judgment in the right way. Preach the name of the Lord. So how do you solve your dispute as a child of God? How do you solve your dispute? Many times we fail because we don't know how to solve disputes amongst us. When one wrongs you, which way do you take as a child of God? Do you take the worldly way or do you take the Christian way? The choice is yours. Nobody will make you a choice. It is you to make a decision to glorify God by the choice you make to solve a dispute among your brothers. Praise the name of the living God. And this can also be clarified in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17. The Bible says, a truthful witness gives honesty testimony 
but a false witness tells lies. Hallelujah. That the Bible outlines clearly. A truthful witness gives honest testimonies. So are you a true witness of God? Do you give true with testimonies as a child of God? Praise the name of the Lord. So which kind of testimony do you give wherever you are? When people look at you, what kind of testimony they can testify against you? Praise the name of the living God. And this we can also clarify it clearly. That God hates a false witness. From Proverbs 25 verse 80, the Bible says, Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is the man who gives false testimony against his neighbor. Praise the name of the Lord. When you give a false testimony, the Bible likens you to a club or a sword which is used to destroy. Because when I have a sword and I come against you, it means I will destroy you. So that is the same way with your false testimony. You are just like a sword or a club that a person will use to destroy his enemies. So when you are a false witness, you become, it becomes an enemy of progress in your life as a child of God. And this can also be clarified in Psalms chapter 5 verse 9. The Bible says, not a word from their mouth can be trusted at all. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue, they speak this say. Hallelujah. That God already outlines that not a word from their mouth can be trusted. At times, we as children of God, it reaches a time when people are asked your testimony, they don't know what to say because your actions does not go together with your testimony. Because whatever we do shall determine what we are in the current life. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever you are inside your heart will determine who you are in the eyes of the Lord. And that's why he says, not a word from their mouth can be trusted. There are so many Christians who are not trustworthy. Nobody can trust them because of what they do of what they speak does not glorify God, does not go together with their faith. So what kind of witness are you in the eyes of God? Praise the name of the Lord. And as we finish, we bless the Lord because when all these six things are found in your life, it means you are an enemy of God and the same six things becomes an enemy of progress in the eyes of Lord. So may you this afternoon allow this word of God at weigh you and bring you to the level that God wants you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for this opportunity that his word has come your way and I know very clearly that you have learned and the Holy Spirit shall continue to open it more in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God because this word shall sharpen your life, shall transform your life, that your life shall never be the same as we pray this afternoon. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the word you have spoken to us. May you use it to transform our lives to according to your perfect will. We surrender to you that you may sharpen us, that you may make us vessels of honor as we are found blamelessly free from these six detestable things in your eyes. Help us, O oh Lord, to serve you in honesty and in humility of our, the understanding of us. I pray this afternoon for your people. May you touch them wherever they are as you transform their lives. In the name of Jesus, do I pray with thanksgiving. Now, now that you are there, you have heard the word of God. And maybe you have not given the, your life to Jesus and maybe you backslidden because of one thing to another. God has an op another opportunity for you that you can repeat this prayer before me and you shall be saved once more time again. That Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive all my sins and wash away my sins by your precious blood. Make me your child. 
from today, I'm saved and I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you that now you are a child of God. You can make yourself to find a fellowship around you that will continue to bring you up for the glory of God. I thank you all for listening. And as you can see down our screen, you can still support the work of God. We have our pay bill number there, 823240. You can use it to support the work of God and you shall be blessed. As well as on the screen, we have the phone numbers. You can get in touch with us and we shall minister to you. God bless you greatly. Have a nicely weekend ahead of you. I thank you. We love you all. And may you have a nice time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, yeah.